Hey ho, my name is Joe. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing the mid-year freakout tag. Hello there, my name is Joe, and I am Fight Me Like a Girl, where we do everything bookish and polycystic ovarian syndrome related here. Sometimes I throw something random in, like my last video, because I really want you guys to join me on that journey. Anyway, so let's ignore the fact that I am sweating off my makeup. Let's ignore the fact that my hair is probably sopping wet at this point. It is so freaking hot. The humidity here is insane. Hey Google, what's the humidity right now? The current humidity in Hampton is 76%. So over 50%, it's 76% for the humidity right now and that's like crazy insane and just I'm like sweating in places I didn't think I could sweat. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> but anyway, so when it comes to reading this year, reading has just not come naturally for me this year. Um, normally, I find myself reading like five or six books in a month. Lately, it's been one or two. Just this year, it's been one or two books a month. And it's weird because it's just this, just not me it is not how I normally read but I feel like I've done enough to do the mid-year freak out tag uh, let's open up Goodreads I have read a total of 15 books this year hang my head in shame I know it's awful so why am I even doing a mid-year freakout tag if I've only read 15 books? Well, I feel like the mid-year freakout tag is a good way to reflect on the books that you've already read for the year. I'm currently reading like four books, so um, I'm hoping to get those done by the end of the month. But, you know, we shall see. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive in and see what happens. Our 13 questions. So let's see how... I've liked my books or, you know, let's see how my reading year has been so far. Question number one. What is the best book that you've read so far in 2021? Hmm. Best book I've read in 2021. I really have to think about that one. Oh, let's see. Best book I've read in 2021. The best book I'm going to have to go with is The Girl Who Lived by Christopher Grayson. I have talked about this a couple of times before and this book is just so mind-blowing. I cannot probably, I just can't talk about this book enough. It is just so mind-blowing. If you're not familiar with this, you follow a girl who is 10 years after she witnessed her family being murdered and she's getting released from an insane asylum and she's battling depression, her inner demons, and the killer is still out there stalking her, trying to kill her. But just when you think you have the killer figure it out, it twists it at least three or four times until you'll be like, wait, really? So yes, I would highly recommend this book to anybody. Question number two is best sequel that you've read in 2021. See, I haven't really read very many sequels this lately. Uh, this year I've been trying to go through the contemporaries, but I think I know. Okay, yeah, we got this. The best sequel that I've read in 2021 so far is Zin Minyan and the Riddle of the Russian Rye. This is a middle grade and you follow Zen in his journey to basically run a restaurant at 14 years old. Adorable series. I still have yet to read the final book in the series, but I loved this. I love it. I loved this one. Like, I think this is the best one I've read so far. But it also see we'll see how the Last Supper plays out. But love this. Number three is a new release that you haven't read yet, but you've been meaning to. Um. Well, there's a lot of those. Uh. I think the biggest one. So the book that was released this year that I still yet to read, I found myself reading it before, but then I got confused so I put it down. But that is The Project by Courtney Summers. 
this book was so confusing to start with. So right now it's DNF'd, but I do plan to pick it up and read it. So number four, your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I am going to have to go with Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. I cannot wait for this book. It get released in September. I think it's September 16th, maybe. And can we just talk about that cover for a minute? Like, that cover is stunning. Like, so stunning. And I'm dying in here. Uh, so, yes, I cannot wait for this book. So excited. All right, what was your what was your biggest disappointment of the year? My biggest disappointment of the year, I think you guys might actually be a little shocked by this, but if I really think about it, okay, there was really two, but if I narrow it down to just the one, I'm going to have to go about Val So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. Um, I truly do honestly love this series. But this just didn't, I don't know, I think I definitely ended up giving it four stars just because I just, I feel like I was rating the whole entire series at that point. So if I gave this four stars, it was for the four stars for the whole series. But if I had to give this a personal rating, I would say this is a two star. Only because, how do I explain it? Uh... I didn't get the Harper and Rain story like I wanted. It almost kind of feel like it became Gray's story. With that being Gray's story, it just didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. And I wanted more from Harper and Rain. And we got Lee Mariah and Gray mostly in this. And... It just, yeah, this was definitely a letdown for me. What was your biggest surprise so far this year? My biggest surprise? Okay. The biggest surprise that I had this year that I, I didn't, I went into it thinking, okay, this is a really popular book, a really popular series. I'm going into it with very high expectations because everybody talks about it quite a lot and it's just one of those series is just hyped across the whole entire booktube community. A lot of people have been backlashing lately because of the author, this thing that she said about the transgender stuff. But my biggest surprise was The Sorcerer's Stone of Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. And the reason that this is my biggest surprise is because I was not expecting to be like it as much as I did. I mean, I devoured this in one day. Like, six hours I devoured this. And I didn't hate it as much as I thought I was going to hate it. So that was my biggest surprise. Like, I I wasn't really going to the expectations. Like, okay, yeah, I want to hate this book because of what it represents and, you know... I just didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I still ended up giving it four stars just because I, 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 I'm I still trying to figure out why I gave it four stars, but I know I gave it four stars, but it was one of my surprises of the year. A new favorite author, new favorite author, debut or new to you would be new to me. Um, my new favorite author, hmm. I want to have to go with Jennifer Robson. Um, I've been slowly getting into romance. Uh, like, not like heavy romance, but like, you know, very subtle romances. And Jennifer Robson has really surprised me when I read The Darkest Night, or our, excuse me, Our Darkest Night. I picked up a couple of her books, and I'm looking to read them. Um, the other author that is new to me is Jennifer Grace, uh, Christopher Grayson. And then we have Michael Daswick. Um, and I guess you could say J.K. Rowling. 
Like, those are, like, all new authors to me. Number eight, a newest fictional crush. <sighs> okay, well, this might expose me a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe not. No, we won't go with that one. My newest fictional crush. I am going to have to go. What was his name? Antonio? Antonio? No, that wasn't it. What was his name? Uh, Nicolo, Nicolo, I guess that's how I pronounce it. Nicolo, um, in our darkest night. Oh my God! Like the way he was like very dreamy sounding, and he seemed like my cup of tea. Newest favorite character. Hmm. Um. I'm going to have to go with uh, Miss Cece Ross and Follow Your Arrow. I only have the this one because I gifted the other one to a friend. So, yeah. Alright, next is a book that made you cry. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys can already gather what this one's going to be. And if you missed that vlog, I will leave it linked down below. But I was ugly crying with this one. Alright, I'm not sure what I did with it, but the book that made me cry was Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. There we go. Uh, that book made me ugly cry. You want to see that vlog, I will leave it linked down below or tag it up here because yeah, I was like seriously bawling my eyes out. Number 11, a book that made you happy. Hmm. A book that made me really happy. Well, a book that gave me kind of like all the feels and I, I felt good about it and I felt um, just overall happy when I read it. Our Darkest Night by Jennifer Robson. I, this, I think this is like my first really, we're going to call it romance that I've read and I I really loved this. The reason I picked it up because it was about World War II and I just was not expecting it to be a romance but I really still did love it a lot. <laughs> like a lot. Alright number 12. The most beautiful book that you've received this year. A beautiful book that I've received? Oh my goodness there's so many stunning covers that book I received this year. A beautiful book. Um. The book I would have to go with with that that has just a beautiful cover is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I wanted to like this book so bad. I wish the story was as stunning as the cover, but it's not, unfortunately. Not for me anyway. And the last question is number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? The question is what books do like I need to read there's more than one but if I had to pick one book that I need to read by the end of the year uh, that I got to be taken back by Kia Abdullah I still yet to read this and I hope to soon but here. All right, so that is my mid-year freakout tag. If you did this video, I would love for you guys to leave a comment down below linking me to your video so I can go watch it. And, you know, 
even though I've only read 15 books, this is still fun to reflect and go back and just look over what you've read and just think about what you've read. So, with my short little stack that I've read, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you hit subscribe because I try to post on two days a week. Uh, lately it's just been on Tuesdays, but I try to do Tuesdays and Fridays. Sometimes it's been random, sometimes it's been in between. I've just been dealing with some mental health issues that I'm just trying to address. So I, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. And anybody who joins me, well, please bear with me. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And whenever you are watching this, and as always... Every book that I mention is always listed down below so you can go check them out for yourself. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!